She puts her hands back where I can see them, palms facing out, glistening like the leaves of some great desert flower. She is offering or asking, but at least not concealed anymore. We're big believers in nonverbal communication. As in, we met at a Women in Leadership seminar and the fella leading the course said, be mindful ladies of what your hands may give away that you may not wish them to. He said, when a man puts his hands in his pockets with his thumbs out, that's him gently asserting he has a penis, like so. I didn't need the visual, but he's clearly in his element and so there's only two minutes until the coffee break. I withstand. He says, where you point your feet and fingers in the room is an indicator of who you think you have power over. He says, the best way to show that you're listening, that you're open, that you're receptive, is to show your palms. Somehow that one stuck. We buy the free teas and coffees and room temperature orange juice. And she offers me a coffee and I make a thing of showing her my palm to show how open and receptive I am. Oh, just looks like you're demanding it now. You could fetch your own biscuits for that. I was planning to. It's Highland shortbread. I won't be rushed. Her, her smile is bewitching though. And I spill my coffee a little as I take it from my hands. Before I can respond, however, the course leader fella bustles in. Excuse me, loves, can I just get to the biscuits? I've got low blood sugar I have, and my emergency Kit Kat isn't in my breast pocket like I thought. He lingers on the word breast that suddenly makes me conscious of the dip in my blazer. Go right ahead, she breathes. You're welcome. But her feet pivot and plant, cornering him so he's under her supervision the entire time. He has a fresh sheen of sweat on his forehead by the time he scuttles away. I spill my coffee again and my fingers dripped. She never intimidated me. Impressed me, but not. We swapped numbers at the end of the conference, but then went on to a pub. And the way she spoke to the bar staff, it was like they shared a secret and the secret was, I deserve your undivided attention. Don't disappoint me. The first couple of dinners, the recommendations of wine, of films, of hairdressers even. And it's nice. Nice to be advised, to have guidance. I'd been feeling flat, I'd not long lived in the city and she was a roadmap of not only how to do it, but to do it well. My friends started to mention how much more confident I was, how decisive, and I liked that. Grew into it, like a fringe, I got a fringe. I introduced her to friends, see them to their taxis, and they'd say, God, she's great, she's, she's great, but you were awfully quiet tonight, Rosie. Oh, I just like taking her in, I suppose. We went to a Halloween party, her sister's. I arrive, dressed as zombie Bjork. She's Catwoman. I misread the tone. I think. She is quiet when she greets me. Won't really look at me. Asks if I saw the dress code. I wither. Until I make her sister laugh. And then she's proud. And I grow another couple of inches. We finish the night. And she thanks me. And then my tenancy is coming to an end, and I think, oh, I should ask, shouldn't I? Muster up the courage, be empowered, and 
Oh, Rosie, I'd love that. Yes, we could have the study, or I could at least clear you a seat. Yes, absolutely. She kissed me like she was taking a breath as a deposit. I ended up being the one to clear space in a few of her drawers. She was away leading a mentorship programme, folding her coloured collots, the tartans, the blouses. It felt exciting and intimate. I stuffed mine, these forest green trousers alongside, sophisticated I thought, but they paled in comparison like wilted spinach. I put on her suits and I felt electric. When she gets home, I have been daring. I've been to BQ. Oh, I thought we could paint the study together. She shifts on her feet. She's so tired. She probably just wants a glass of wine, but I want this now. I'd appreciate it, I say. Make it feel like home for me. I've chosen a shade that I knew that she'd like, lavender grey. And before we begin, I say that we should paint ourselves on the wall. And she says, we're not that kind of couple, Rosie. Don't make this difficult. And I say, aren't we? I put my finger in the paint and I draw us as stick women, hand in hand, and I'm taller than her. She takes the roller and drowns the happy couple, but it's a imitation of the action. She tires, I step behind her, put my hand on hers and guide her arm, direct and confident. At some point she disappears from underneath me. And I keep going until half the wall is cool and crisp as stone. I turn to her, proud of my work, and her hands go from her armpits to her pockets, to in front of her, bare. She's offering or asking. take her hands in mine and I kiss them. Where the paint meets, we're each other now, we're the wall. We're the shadows. interlocking upon it. Thank you.